Here's your video for rational expressions covering multiplying and dividing. I would definitely recommend that you go through the videos, the introduction to rational expressions, and go through simplifying because those ideas are really what's at the heart of what we're doing with multiplying and dividing. We'll start with a numerical example just to talk about what our approach is for these problems. We don't want to just go ahead and multiply straight across. What we're actually doing uh, is working on factoring. So with this problem, to factor, I would think about these factor trees. So we're going to go all the way down to prime factors. From the 50, we can go down and find a 255. The 21 has prime factors 7 and 3. The 84 is a fun one. It's 2, 2, 3, 7. And the last, the 25, is 5 times 5. And what we're going to do is create a new fraction. And if you thought about, well, with multiplying fractions, we multiply the numerators together and then multiply the denominators together, I think that's a great idea because we're going to be able to write our answer as one fraction. Just as long as we keep from the 50, the 255, we'll keep those on top. And they will be multiplied to the 21, just the factors of 21, 7 and 3. They are also up top in the numerator. We'll put the factors for 84 and 25 down in the denominator, so 2, 2, 3, and 7. And there's the 5, 5. And as soon as we have everything factored, we're already trying to cancel. So the factor, if we see it once in the numerator and once in the denominator, those can be canceled because that's a, a fraction equal to 1. And so anything times 1 equals itself. So we can get rid of those. There's a pair of 5s. And it's OK to go diagonally just as long as it's 1 on top with 1 on the bottom. Another set of 5s. The 7s go. The 3s go. Lots of canceling. So now we're ready to write our answer. There's nothing left that can be canceled. From the denominator, we have left over a 2, but nothing left over from the numerator. Now when that happens, we will put back a 1. So this answer should be 1 half. And if you come up with an answer of 2, we want to make an adjustment there. If everything gets canceled, you should put back a 1. And that will keep us on track here, that that 2 in the denominator really should stay in the denominator and give us that answer of 1 half. So since you are fresh off of factoring and simplifying, we won't get into too many details. We'll go uh, pretty soon into some example. Well, here's an example. We'll go through this one together, but uh, pretty quickly we'll, I'll have some for you to try. And just remember, just because it's multiply, our rules really are no different than just simplifying. We like to factor and then cancel. So this problem begins with four individual factoring problems that we must do and then we will look for things to cancel. I know that I will be combining numerators and combining denominators into one large fraction. So I have my fraction bar set up. And as I do each factoring, I'll be putting my factored results into this fraction. So starting with the x squared plus 6x. The only type of factoring we can do there is there is a GCF, an x that we can divide out from each term is out front with x plus 6 left in parentheses. This kind, I don't want to spend too much time going through the factoring examples. If you are up to rational expressions, you should have the factoring down smooth. And it is very important to have that before you move into these operations with rational expressions. So at first, we can still go through a couple. But pretty quickly, we're not going to go into the details about how we factoring. Just a reminder about this one. It's three terms with a leading coefficient. This is the kind where we would multiply first and third to come up with this number. We'd need to look for a pair of numbers that multiplied together would equal that 10 and added together would equal our middle term. And then we would need to split it up and do factor by grouping. Um, so I, I'm not going to go through all the steps there. If, it's, if it's, this seems fuzzy, I would recommend that you just uh, interrupt your rational expressions and go and do some more brushing up with factoring. In the long run, it's just going to make life easier, even if you have to stop now and go review factoring for a bit. So anyway, uh, we'll keep going with this one. Um, bottom left, can we factor this binomial? Always looking for the GCF first. 3x we can divide out from each term. And we are left with 2x plus 5 in parentheses. And bottom right, x squared minus 36, a binomial that is a difference of squares. And it's factored as x plus 6 times x minus 6. 
x plus 6s, those binomial factors are gone, and 2x plus 5 cancel. Other things we can cancel. Yeah, the variables out front, we should check those. We can cancel those x's. And nothing left to cancel. We're ready to write our answer. Just be mindful of what stays in the numerator and what stays in the denominator. Nothing should shift around. So our x plus 1 is still in the numerator. 3 times x minus 6 in the denominator. And you can leave it just like this. You don't need to distribute that 3. If you were to do that, it would not make your answer incorrect. I just think it's an extra move that is not necessary. And often we'd like to have our answers written in factored form. So that is a great looking answer. Let's go right into talking about division problems because they are very similar. Think about what you would do to uh, execute this division problem with fractions. Hopefully you're thinking about reciprocal, that the second fraction we would flip it and then we have a multiplication problem. This 7 tenths, if we flip it, uh, we swap numerator and denominator, make it 10 sevenths, that turns it into a multiplication problem. But just remember what we do for multiplying fractions. We like to factor, then cancel. So the 2 I've brought over, the 10 I've written 2 times 5, the prime factors. Our denominators are both prime, 5 times 7. There's the factor. There's the cancel. 5 and 5 are the only factors we can cancel. We're left with 2 and another 2 in the numerator. And remember, leftover factors have to be multiplied together. That leads us to our 4 sevenths. So all we need to know is when it comes to dividing, we take that second fraction and flip and then we finish it exactly the same way we finish other multiplication problems. Here is our division example. And what I want you to do is, at this point, pause the video and just attempt the factoring that we have here. It's going to be a good way to assess how your factoring is currently going. Pause it right now, and I want you to just see how your factoring currently is, and then we will actually go through all the steps of these four factoring so you can see where you're, st where you're doing it correctly, where you might be going off path. So pause the video and try these four, and then we will take a sort of detailed look at each of the four, and then we'll finish this problem. Now let's go through these four expressions that we need to factor. We'll start with, and I, hope, I want you to actually have these four written down because we're going to go through them one at a time. Let's start with the 3x squared minus x minus 2. We are looking at three terms with a leading coefficient. So we need to multiply our first coefficient by our third coefficient, or that third, it's a constant in this case. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Our next move is, what is a pair of numbers that multiplied will equal negative 6? Added together will equal our middle coefficient, which is a negative 1 right there. And the choice that will work is negative 3 and positive 2, the only pair of numbers that will work. With these numbers, we split that middle term up into two new terms. The negative 1x is really gone, and in its place, negative 3x plus 2x. And we can see that if we were to combine those terms, we would get back the negative x we started with. But having those two terms there instead means that bring down the first, the 3x squared, bring down that minus 2, and we are in perfect shape to finish with factor by grouping. Pair up the first two terms and find the GCF, 3x, x minus 1 left over in parentheses. From the second pair, the GCF, positive 2 with x minus 1 in parentheses, and we do need to see the matching binomial factor here in parentheses. x minus 1 matches that x minus 1, so that's good. We can finish it up. x minus 1 will be one of our factors, and the other factor made up of the 3x and the, that positive 2. There's our 3x plus 2. So we have one of our expressions factored. Let's move on to the next one. Let's take the 9x squared minus 4. 